School's back in full swing, and it brings the excitement of seeing friends, having fun, but also the pressures of studying and test taking. So in this video, I'm partnering up with Notion for an in-depth walkthrough of my extended brain and my complete learning system. So you can enjoy more of this and less of this. So I'm Maddie. I'm a former medical doctor who now helps people improve their learning to create a life doing more of what they love. And for most of us, that begins with the three core components of a lifelong learning system. Scheduling, learning, and organizing. I'll leave links for Extended Brain below for anyone who wants a plug and play template which comes with loads of walkthrough tutorials. I also created some free light versions if you'd rather start it there. Either way, I hope this video will be useful for helping you build your own learning system. All right, let's hop over to Notion. One of the most common questions I get from students is how do I keep track of my studies? In college, I had four to five classes at a time. In med school, I only had one at a time, but with the amount of stuff we had to study, it was basically like five. So if there's a lot on our plates, we need to know how to focus on the most important stuff. That's why I created the GROW method. It's an acronym for prioritizing your study schedule. G stands for GRID, an organized and visual way to display everything study related. And it's found in my study dashboard. So here are all the folders for my current classes. We have physics, chemistry, study quest, which is our learning skills program where we teach you how to get better grades in less time, writing, and... Oops, uh, this is actually not supposed to be here. I think that was uh, Mike's or my mom's or something. At the beginning of a semester, I'll open up every single folder and I'll input my class syllabus, including all of my lectures with their dates. And if I scroll to the bottom, any of my upcoming assignments for that class by status, and of course, all of my exams. And there's a cool formula in here that if I change the date, it automatically updates and lets me know how many days left I have to procrastinate. And that way, when I return to my study dashboard by clicking on method here, I can see the entire grid from one calendar. And if this looks kind of chaotic, I totally agree, which is why I have a few filters here where I can filter by the specific class, like only my physics class, and I can filter by type if I want to only see lectures or exams or assignments. These two views here for assignments and exams are going to show me all of the assignments I have for every single class and every single exam for every single class. So GRID is all about having a visual way to track everything. But we also need a way to manage a review schedule, which is R in GROW, record. After I start studying or I go to class, I'll open up a lecture and I'll record how confident I feel with that material. I keep it super simple. If I am confident, I'll mark Ranger. And if I'm not confident, I'll mark Rookie. If I haven't studied this lecture yet, it's gonna give me a mastery of none, right? Less options, less stress, hypothetically. Retire is for if I'm not gonna be tested on that topic at all. So let's choose Rookie here because I kind of suck at physics. <laughs> Pop-up's gonna appear here for me to record my review. I'll click Sounds Good and boom. Now clicking on that button triggers a sequence of automations that I program to where the last review date gets updated to today. And a review log is created at the bottom here that's also timestamped exactly when I clicked it. There are a couple more things that I like to record and I'll do so by clicking on the pencil next to edit here. I record how long I spent studying, 60 minutes or something. And I also record my mood. How did I feel during that study session? frustrated. Recording data about your study sessions is so underrated. You know, I used to never self-reflect on anything and then I'd be shocked when I tanked another exam. Like, what the heck? Like I would make the same mistakes over and over again because I was too dumb to realize that I was even making mistakes. Which is why in Extended Brain, if I go to my growth mindset dashboard in purple, this is where I journal, I set my goals, I track my habits, but there's also this page called the log library. And if I click on the log library, this is where I can view all of my global study stats. It compiles each individual review log, how long I studied for it, which topic I studied, and also that timestamp that was created. I can see every single time I was anxious, I was calm, I was energized. And if I switch views, I can see different combinations of stats. The focus view shows me by most recent reviews, how long I did in each mood. And if I go to consistency, I can actually zoom out even further and I can see my daily stats. My total study time for the day, which is a roll-up property calculating all of the different times that I put in, and also my procrastination rate, or what I call my study streak here. This is a formula that basically means if I study today, it's gonna check and it calculates at the bottom on a monthly basis how often I studied, or for me, my procrastination rate, which is not great, uh, 40%. And so with this data, I can self-reflect much more effectively to find weaknesses and gaps in my study habits. And that way I don't make the same mistake over and over again. Let's return to the study dashboard though. And from this grid view, I can see the last time I also reviewed a topic. 
the red pin date and my confidence level. Pretty useful, right? But for a more focused view, I'm actually gonna switch over to the table view. Now, this grid displays only topics that I've started studying, right? Stuff that's either rookie or ranger. And it's organized by class, like physics, chemistry, uh, study quest. This is my preferred grid view for managing my review schedule because I can see my mastery, the last review date, and also how many times I already reviewed this topic. Because the next step in GROW, O stands for overall outcome. Let's be honest, we're students, we procrastinate, we have a lot going on with One Piece, the new season of JJK, stalking our exes and chasing girls and boys who have absolutely no interest in us. I would say very few times in my entire student career did I master 100% of the material. And guess what? You don't really have to in order to do well. There's this concept called the 80-20 rule or Pareto principle. 80% of the test comes from 20% of the material. This is why, generally speaking, getting a B on an exam doesn't require like too much effort. But the jump from a B to an A requires so much effort because now we're entering that 80% territory. You have to cover a lot more information just to get those last few points. Again, this is a generalization for sure. It depends on the class you're in. But if you think about studying that way, it means you can be much more efficient with your time by focusing on the bread and butter fundamental lectures of your class, right? My point is you don't need to study every single detail for every lecture. It's impractical and honestly, not really worth it. So if I know one of these lectures is gonna be very heavily tested, I'm actually gonna do myself a favor and change the icon to a star. And that lets me know I should probably prioritize it. But aside from that, I'll just aim for an overall outcome of making my grid as green as possible, knowing that it probably won't turn completely green. And to make sure that I'm headed for that overall outcome, I choose to study the weakest topic first, the W in GROW. Most students don't do this, right? They just cycle through lectures one through 10 over and over again. I know this because I used to do it too. But remember, you're probably more confident in some lectures than others. And also not everything is equally important. Important. And so I used to waste a lot of time reviewing stuff I didn't need to, not reviewing stuff that I needed to. So with GROW, that means to focus on the stars first. And if those are all good, then I'll move on to the weakest rookie topics first. And if there are multiple rookie topics, I'm going to choose the one that I haven't reviewed in the longest time. For example, that'd be FORCE right here and also the ones I haven't reviewed as many times. So the GROW method makes it so simple to decide what to study every single day. And I can save all three of my tiny brain cells for actually learning. And it also reduces test anxiety because I can see from my grid view, the overall outcome, right? Of how confident I am and how prepared I am for my upcoming exam. Unless of course, everything is still red, in which case you have my permission to panic a little bit. All right, so knowing what to study is step one, but we also need to know how to do it effectively which is the second core part of the learning system. I see learning as a three-part cycle, construct, connect, and challenge. Think of it like filling out a puzzle. We construct chunks, connect them to create some understanding, and then challenge ourselves to make sure it's accurate. The goal of this cycle is to guide us in critically thinking while we study. So we're not just cluelessly writing things down or blasting through thousands of flashcards without thinking about why. And recently, the most game-changing tool to help navigate the cycle is AI. And very conveniently, Notion has its own native AI, which I'll use to demonstrate this entire process. So let's imagine that I'm going to review for physics today. I'm actually gonna open up the physics folder into a full screen. I'm going to scroll down to the review tab to see my grid view and choose the weakest topic, which is gonna to be two-dimensional kinetics. I'll open it up, scroll down to the notes area, and I'm gonna create a new note here. Let's give it a name. Newton's got nothing on me. And I'm actually gonna open it up into another side peek there. When I create a note from the lecture itself, it automatically links and also links back to the class it came from. So just extra organization there without any extra work. I'm gonna choose this note template. Now, if I go to any blank block in Notion, I'm gonna see faintly in gray, press space for AI. Simple enough, I can follow instructions. Let's hit spacebar and a whole list of options for AI will appear. And Notion AI basically becomes my personal assistant to study smarter. But the thing about AI is that the quality of the response that you get is dependent on the quality of your input. And to be completely transparent, I think that most of these stock prompts in Notion AI are not really good for learning. So instead, here are a couple of my favorite prompts for each step of the CCC cycle. Let's start with 
with construct. Construct is how we approach learning new information. Think of it like taking a road trip. You wouldn't just blindly pick a spot on the map and then just start driving there. You wanna map it out first, right? Maybe look up a few spots along the way, route the course so you don't get stranded in the middle of the desert somewhere. Well, you wanna take that same approach when you're studying. In cognitive psychology, this is called priming, basically preparing our brain for learning. So before diving in, ask Notion AI for a roadmap. I am a beginner to physics, and I am learning about two-dimensional kinetics today. Give me a list of the most important concepts to know. Define each concept in simple terms to the beginner, and then explain how I should approach learning this topic to understand the main ideas. Let's see what I get here. And cool, we have a very useful primer to uh, orient ourselves before diving deeper into this concept. Here's another great way to construct. Take a peek at the learning points or the learning objectives for your upcoming lecture. This is your professor basically telling you what is most important to learn. So highlight your learning objectives, go back to Notion, and ask AI, I am learning, uh, what was the topic actually? Relative motion, distance, and displacement, distance, and displacement today. Here is the list of learning objectives I need to know. Give me a brief and clear summary and how I should approach this lecture. And then go ahead and paste the learning objectives below. I'm going to give them dashes just to differentiate it. And let's see what Notion AI gives me. I love this. It's giving me a step-by-step -step approach to learning this lesson. All right, so next is connect. Connecting the dots of the material to the roadmap. In our road trip example, we've now hit the road and we're seeing the landmarks and we're associating the streets and the stores with a map and we're filling in all the details in our brain with that map that we made. In terms of learning, this means identifying relationships between concepts and seeing how everything fits together. Looking for relationships is probably the single most important thing you can do to retain what you're learning better. So as you go through your lecture and you encounter different terms like these, go back to Notion AI and you can ask it, create a table comparing and contrasting the relationship between displacement, distance, and kinematics for me. Then why this relationship is important for understanding the main idea. Notion AI will even format it in a table like this, which just makes it so much more clear and easy to read. I get to see relationships and also this quick summary about why it's important. Here's another connect strategy. When trying to understand complex topics, it's easier to find relationships with things that you already know. That's called making an analogy. So if I get stumped on like a really difficult concept, right? And rereading that same slide five times over again isn't suddenly gonna make it make sense. So try giving AI this prompt right here. I am having a hard time learning about scalars versus vectors. Give me three simple analogies to help me understand it better. Then explain the strengths and weaknesses of each analogy. It gives me three different simple analogies that I can use and explains why they're useful. And now I can use my prior knowledge about some analogies that I know about and understand this concept a lot more smoothly. All right, and finally, challenge. Challenge is testing our knowledge to make sure that we actually even learned anything. All right, it's taking that road trip again, but this time without GPS and without a map and trying to use all those associations that we learned to figure it out on our own. But the most important part with the challenge is that you actively recall the information without peeking at your notes and without peeking at any resources. And AI can help us out in really cool ways here. One way is to ask Notion AI to create a practice test for you. I am studying motion, displacement, movement, and distance, I think it was, uh, in physics class at the college level. Create a 20 question multiple choice practice test. And you can substitute multiple choice for whatever your test is gonna be. I recommend challenging yourself the exact same way that you're gonna be tested. And if you want, you can even tack on this at the end of it. Make sure to include questions about these learning objectives and then you can paste the learning objectives below. All right, and let's see what I get. Fire, look at that. I love to see it work. And of course, you should take that practice test on your own without peeking at your notes. You can ask Notion AI for the answers and the explanations so you can check your work. All right, here's a second way. Test yourself by explaining the concept first and then asking AI to evaluate your thinking and your accuracy. So you can say something like this. I am studying for physics class and learning about displacement versus distance. Evaluate if my understanding of this topic is correct. Challenge yourself to explain this topic without peeking at your notes again, right? So displacement and distance both mean how far away you are to education. However, displacement refers to net, uh, Planet, net miss away from the and this refers to oil miss travel. Let's see if I got that right or not. Cool. And it gave me a great answer. It says I'm partially correct. And you can kind of just keep working back and forth with it until you deeply understand that concept. And the best part about using AI the way I'm showing you here with construct, connect, and challenge is that you're still 
actively study, right? I'm not just looking stuff up, but I'm actually thinking critically about what I'm studying. AI is actually so good for learning if you use it properly. And I made a much more detailed video about how to speed learn with AI, which you should definitely check out after this video. And right now, Notion is running a promo where all students can get 50 AI credits completely free to experiment with and try the tool in their own workspaces. So try these prompts out for yourself. Let me know what you think. All right, so while I'm studying, I actually prefer to sketch on my iPad for a couple of reasons. First, I like to annotate directly on PDFs or lecture slides and stuff. And second, I think the freedom of handwriting just works way better for me because I draw mind maps and I sketch things out and I make diagrams and stuff. So as I'm sketching my thoughts out, I'm just using AI as an extension of my thinking. And so once I'm finished sketching, I'll actually export my note as a PDF into Notion. And I'm gonna choose the note, Newton's got nothing on me and click save. And because Notion syncs immediately across all devices, if I look back in my computer here, I should see that there is an untitled note that suddenly appeared here. And I don't really wanna see it as a page, so I'm actually gonna click on the dots and turn this into a text. And boom, we can see now that my note was moved directly into Notion. If you don't annotate on your slides or sketch stuff out, this is actually even easier. And it works whether you're on iPad or whether you're on desktop. I'll show you on iPad right here. All I have to do is open up my files folder where I save all my PDFs and stuff and really just click and drag anything I want to directly into my notes area. Let's move another one just for demonstration's sake, just like that. And again, because it syncs automatically, if I go back to my Mac and I open it up, I can see that PDF here, and if I need to download it, I can do that. But basically, Notion serves as like my own cloud storage, where I just put all of my files on for easy access. And so to sum up this whole system so far, I'm using the Grow method to manage my review schedule, knowing what to study. And then once I know what to study, I'll open it up, and I'll actually use AI tools to help facilitate my thinking as I'm sketching notes. And then I'll send those notes directly into Notion. And that way everything is in Notion because I prefer Notion for organization. All right, so now let's move on to part three, which is note-taking and organization. And there is a distinction because at least for me, studying and note-taking serve different purposes. I view note-taking more about gathering and storing ideas to grow a database of knowledge so that I can create content and I can make stuff. Because as you know, or maybe you don't know, there's a lot more to school than just just studying. You know, medical school, I had to do research, I had to read papers, organize events, handle applications, create poster presentations. And let me tell you, I was terrible at organizing stuff. I'd take notes, right? And they'd immediately disappear into the void. Like I'd be halfway through reading an article and then realize like, wait, I've already read this article before. So in Extended Brain, I built a simple way for organizing my notes and my knowledge. And it all starts with a browser extension called Save to Notion. It's completely free. Just type in Save to Notion in your browser somewhere and it should be right here, save to Notion, download it as an extension. Save to Notion creates a page in Notion for any page on the internet that you wanna reference. So for example, I'm currently researching for a YouTube series about focused training, which means I've been doing a lot of lit review on flow psychology and peak performance. Here's an example of an article. I'll read through the abstract and if it piques my interest and it seems like it's worth taking notes on, I'll pull up save to Notion. Save to Notion. Right here, I will choose the database that I want to save it to, which is my extended brain notes database. And from here, I can link it to a lecture if I'm doing research on a lecture, a class if it's for class, or a project if I'm working on a project. And if none of those exists, I can actually make a new project. Let's say this is YouTube video about flow, and I can click on new, and it will make a new page for me there. And I'll hit save page and boom. So Save to Notion will create a page in Extended Brain that's linked to this source URL. My favorite part is, as I read through this article now, I can save highlights that go directly into Extended Brain without even leaving my browser. For example, if this part here seems useful, I'll highlight what I want to extract into Extended Brain like that. I'll right click, use Add Highlight, and then a pop-up will appear. I can write my own personal blurb about why I think this is useful. And then when I'm done, I'll just hit enter to save it to Notion. And I can just continue doing that as I go through this article. I'm just highlighting random stuff here just to demonstrate. This even works for YouTube videos. Like check this out. I'll just go to YouTube and I'll search in Cajun Koi. Let's find a video. This one that we released today. I'll pull up save to Notion here. 
click the database that I want to save it to. At the bottom, I actually have an option to embed the YouTube video into Notion itself. I'll click save page, boom, it saves to Notion. And I can even take notes on this video. I'll click the dots here to show transcript and I can show the transcript as I'm watching the video to follow along. And anything I highlight here, I can, just like before, right click, add highlights. This part was cool, enter, and it'll save that highlight to Notion. So if I go back to Notion now, I'm gonna head over to my knowledge base. This is where all my notes are, and that can be found in the manage pathway here. I'll click on knowledge management here under the notes inbox and notes library section. I can see all of those notes that I just saved to Notion, right? Here's that flow psychology paper, and it's linked to that YouTube project that I made. Let's open up the notes and we can see this is the name of that paper. It's linked to that new YouTube video about flow. Here are those highlights that I saved. And if I expand 13 more properties, there is that link that goes back to the original source document, right? So this notes library here just shows me all of the notes that are linked to a specific project or a specific lecture or a specific class but I can also go to those individual folders themselves to see their individual notes. And you might be wondering, where the heck is that YouTube video that we just saved? Well, for any notes in Save to Notion that I don't link a topic, a class, or a project, they go to my notes inbox, which is another link right here. And I can open it there. I'll scroll down, right? And there is that YouTube video. So the notes inbox is kind of like a temporary holding zone for any notes that I haven't linked to any projects, topics, or domains. But if I want to, I can just link them here um, by clicking on project and linking it to that page and it disappears from the notes inbox. So nothing gets lost, but at least this area is cleaned up, right? So let's go back to the YouTube video about flow. Let's open up that YouTube video. Here's that highlight with my comment about what timestamp it was. And if I scroll down, there is the video embedded directly into Notion. So this workflow makes researching and note-taking so efficient. I cannot stress how valuable this has been for me, even outside of being a student. As a creator, I consume a ton of content, books, articles, papers, and podcasts. And since Mike and I are in the process of writing a book about learning and productivity, it's been even more valuable and important for us to store our notes and keep a running list of citations. I have complete peace of mind. I never have to worry about losing links or misplacing files because everything gets sent and stored directly into Extended Brain. So if you're able to lock in those three things, I guarantee you're going to cruise through school. You'll have a pretty rad learning system for the rest of your life. The workflow in Extended Brain isn't just for students. It's for creators, professionals, or anyone just looking to manage their life in a more streamlined way. I wish I had a system like this years ago to grow my knowledge database instead of throwing away my notebooks or deleting all my files at the end of a semester. Kind of makes me sad, you know, that all of that cool stuff that I learned over the years is just lost and I have nothing to show for it. Anyways, for those of you interested, there are a ton of other really powerful features with Extended Brain, like habit tracking, self-reflection, task management, calendars, goal setting. So if you want a completely done for you system, definitely check it out. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks. I know that was a little bit of a long one. I have one final gift for you. If you're a student or educator, you can actually get Notion Plus completely for free if you sign up using your .edu email. Just another way that Notion is here to support us in our journey of self-discovery. Anyways, I hope you got something useful from this video. If anything, at least understanding the value of creating that lifelong learning system today is going to serve you for the rest of your life. If you want to connect, hit me up on Instagram or on Twitter. X, oh, it's weird to think or say that, um, and let me know about what other Notion content I should make or any other productivity focused content that we should do. And I uh, appreciate it. Thanks for watching.